chaff cart is towed behind the harvester with the aim of collecting the weed seeds as they exit the harvester in the chaff fraction. The chaff is then dumped in piles around the paddock which are often later burnt and in some cases they're grazed. Lance Turner is a grain grower at East Pingilly who crops 5,500 hectares and Lance has been towing a chaff cart for the past eight years with great success as well as using a lot of other integrated weed management tools. We've been using Glean since um, 82. Um, in, in 92 we um, all of a sudden realised, hey this ryegrass wasn't dying and um, we actually had to grade our wheat to, to get it in the bin to get the ryegrass out of it. And it was about that time I did a, a RIM workshop, which is the ryegrass integrated management. And it didn't matter how I twisted the rotations, the, the you know, what, you know, chemical applications, we were going to lose, lose out in, within about 10 to 15 years. We went and had a look at a cousin of ours and his neighbour, and they've had a chaff cart that had an elevator on it. So it's not a new system. We had a look at it and said we can do that. So we, we made up this um, chaff cart and elevator system. So that solved the collection issue as far as um, doesn't compromise the, the header at all. So the header is just a normal header, we can harvest at normal pace. The issue that it solved for us was the, the, the burning issue, which because of the short straws in there, it's not all smashed up, it lets air into the stack. So that they'll burn out in about eight to 12 hours. So we still want to chop and spread as much as we can. And so we actually are only taking the, um, the, the chaff away, not the, the bulk of the material going through the header. The residue is the, is the key there to keep our moisture and nutrients and stop our country blowing away. We can put a chute on over the chopper veins, so now you can see it's powering everything straight down onto the belt. So you get a lot more dumps, but when you've got a weedy patch, we know we can go in and just catch 100% of everything that goes in that header front. So we're not getting some seeds go out with the straw. We probably are only getting about 60% of the seeds, but it's a numbers game. That's about what probably 85 to 90% of our farms like now. Yeah, you can see it's just cropped now. Bear in mind that a few years ago we had to grade our wheat to get, the, get it into the bin. We've now got it to this stage. Out east on the um, heavy red country we've been playing around a lot with 20 inch spacings as well on wheat. And you can't do that without a clean paddock so that's, that's what a lot of it's like out there now. You know, when it comes to burning time, which will be another probably three weeks, we'll go and put a break right around that line, probably 10 or 15 metres out. We do most of the burning at night time because there's no willy willies, no, um, the wind's a lot calmer, you don't get the, the heat effect as far as, or well, the heat will make the willy willies and you'll often get the fire try to jump the little break. So if you start about four o'clock in the afternoon, the heat's gone out of the day and we'll often light up 400 hectares a night. Um, some of the most commonly asked questions is, you know, do you have to stop the dump or do you have to reverse up? It's not allowed to slow harvest down. So you just hit the button and if you have a year like 010 where there's not much crop and you're going a lot quicker, the, the dumps actually just drag out a little bit more. They just get longer rather than taller. But it's, it's all about burning, so that still burns all the seeds, so it's not an issue. That's the last day of seeding, the 13th of May. And for our area, that's pretty early, but we just find early is always better. Most of our neighbours haven't even started yet, and that there is probably about 20 minutes off finishing our entire program. The biggest drawback is it effectively gives us one sowing date. If we have a frost, everything's sown on the one date. Time and time again, we're finding our crops that are early will often miss the frost because it's the late frost that are doing the damage to us with our lupins. You've got your treflan, you've got your simazine. Because we're dry seed, we usually get a lot of volunteer cereals, so we're going with targa, and targa still does have some effect on some, some of our ryegrass. And then we've got um, select, and then we've got a crop top, which is coming with paraquat just at leaf drop, and then we back it up with a chaff cart. So there's six hits that we're getting at those weeds it's not a silver bullet, but it's a pretty bloody big linchpin in a, in a whole, whole system. If we have a look at the cost of a chaff cart, obviously a second-hand chaff cart is cheaper per hectare to run than a brand new chaff cart due to the lower capital cost. And some growers believe that they don't need to consider the cost of the nutrients in residue removal because they already have high potassium soils. So the green bars show the cost of running a chaff cart if we ignore the cost of nutrient removal in the residue. You can find more information on the WeedSmart website.